In this video, I will show you how to deploy a TypeScript backend application using Encore. And we will start with the local Hello World app and then take the steps to get that running in the cloud. We will make use of GitHub Actions to set up continuous deployments and look at how to connect to a database in a cloud environment. Let's dive in. Encore is an open source framework that aims to make it easier to build robust and type safe backends. And the framework is available for both TypeScript and Go, and it has a lot of built in features to make the development experience smoother, especially when it comes to handling infrastructure. And we will see that later when I add a database to our Hello World application. In this video, I will be using Encore.ts which is the TypeScript version, but the deployment process looks the same regardless of which version you use. Encore is completely open source, so read the code on GitHub, fork it, contribute to it, and when building an application, you can self-host it without any looming quotas or hidden fees, just like you would expect. And performance-wise, Encore.ts is extremely fast compared to other Node.js and BUN frameworks. And in this benchmark, we measure requests per second on a public API endpoint. And the main reason why Encore.ts is so fast is because it uses Rust under the hood. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I've left a link under the video. When building an Encore app, you get a Docker image. And deploying an Encore app works the same way as any app packaged as a Docker container. So if you've done that before, this will seem very familiar to you. You can deploy an Encore app to any platform that accepts Docker images, like AWS, Heroku, or DigitalOcean. I will be using DigitalOcean in this example, but the process would look pretty much the same for any cloud platform. On a high level, these are the steps that we're gonna take. We're gonna create an Encore app. We're gonna use Encore build to get a Docker image. We're gonna tag and push that image to a container registry. And then we're gonna get that image deployed to a cloud platform. Simple enough, let's look at it in practice. Here we are in my terminal. I have the Encore CLI installed so we can run Encore app create to create a new app. We get asked if we want to create a Go or TypeScript app. I will pick the Hello World template and then we can give our app a name. Let's take a quick look at the code that we got. And in the Hello service, we have one application file called hello.ts. And in here, we only have one endpoint right now, on path slash hello slash name, where the name is a dynamic path parameter. And inside the API handler, we are concatenating hello with the path parameter, and that's it. We can run the app locally by running Encore Run in the root of our repo. Our app is now running, so we can curl it. But we can also open the local development dashboard that we get access to when running the app and call our endpoint from there. It works. We have ourselves an app. Now let's deploy it to the cloud. Let's try running Encore build locally. And when this is done, I will be able to see the image in my local Docker registry. Now I could push the image from my local machine to the cloud registry. That would definitely work and might be sufficient for a one-off kind of thing. But a nicer workflow is, of course, if the app builds and deploys itself when we push to our repo. So let's set up a continuous deployment workflow. Let's take a look at my dashboard on DigitalOcean. We will be pushing Docker images to our registry here on DigitalOcean. But before we do so, we need to create a registry. We also need to create a DigitalOcean API token because we will be pushing Docker images programmatically from GitHub Actions. I have already created a token that I have conveniently named GitHub Actions. I've also created a repo on GitHub and pushed our Hello World app code. Under Settings, Secrets and Variables, Actions, you can see that I have added the API token in a secret named DigitalOcean Access Token. Let's move back to the editor and locally I've added a workflow file under .github workflow deploy image.jaml. So let's go through that code together. 
The workflow will run when new code is pushed to our main branch. We set the needed permissions, we check out the code so our workflow can access it, and the next step is to download and install the Encore CLI, which we need in order to build the Docker image. We build the image using Encore Build, and then we log into the container registry on DigitalOcean using our API token, we tag the Docker image, and finally we push the image. So let's add, commit and push this file, which will trigger this workflow to run. We can see that our action is running. And now that it's done, we should be able to see our image over on DigitalOcean. If you enjoyed this video so far, then please leave a like. It helps getting the content in front of more people. Now it's time to deploy our app. And we're going to go to the app platform and create a new app from DigitalOcean Container Registry. And now we can select the image we just uploaded. We also want to leave the auto deploy option checked. So every time we push a new image with the tag latest, a new version of our app will get deployed. Here you can edit the app's resource size among other things. And we want to make sure that the public HTTP port is set to 8080, which is the default for an Encore app. That looks good to me, so let's create our app. And this will trigger our deploy. Our app is now live, so let's test it out. If we go to hello slash world, we should see our message, and there it is. One aspect that is unique to Encore is how easy and seamless it is to create and manage infrastructure. Adding a database or a pub subtopic only requires a few lines of application code and when running your application locally, Encore parses your code and creates all the infrastructure your app needs. So now let's add a database that works for our app locally and then take the steps needed to connect to a cloud database. All you need to do to create a Postgres database with Encore is to instantiate a new SQL database. We give it a name and a path to the migrations folder. Encore has built-in support for ORMs like Prisma and Drizzle, but I will keep it vanilla for this example. We can now use the mydb variable to query and insert into the database. I have added another endpoint that takes an ID as a path parameter, queries the database based on that ID and returns a user. In the migrations folder are ordinary SQL migration files. Here we are creating a table with two fields and then we insert a default user. And when running Encore locally, migrations will be handled for you when running Encore run. So let's do that now. You will need to have Docker Desktop installed when running an app with a database because Encore uses Docker to set up databases. Here you can see that Encore is creating a database cluster and running the migrations. If we open the app in the local development dashboard, we should be able to get the user from the database. Okay, that's great. Now we have a local database, but let's make it work in our deployed environment as well, shall we? If we try to run Encore build right now, you will see that Encore complains that we have not supplied a runtime configuration for how to connect to a database outside of the local environment. And to do that, we first need a cloud database we can connect to. I have created a Postgres database cluster on DigitalOcean. Here is the connection details, which we will need shortly. We can also go ahead and download the CA certificate. And I've stored the database password as an environment variable for our app, so I don't need to store that in our code. Under users and databases, we can see that we have one database named default DB. I have attached the database to our app to make the app a trusted source for the database. 
So let's mirror the table schema that we have locally in our deployed database. We can use the psql command to connect to our database from the terminal. And I'm just going to copy in the contents from our migrations file. Now we can create the runtime configuration so that Encore knows how to connect to this database in production. In the root of our repo, I've created a file named runtime.config.json with the following content. We have a key called SQL servers, and in here we want to specify the host, which contains both the host name and the port. And in the transport layer security config, we specify the CI certificate. But if the platform you're deploying to does not allow for downloading the database certificate, then you can set disable CA validation to true instead. Next up is our databases. This name maps to what we call our database in our code. And here we supply the name of the database in DigitalOcean. We also give it the username and the database password. And you can use this syntax to point to an end variable instead of giving a hard-coded value. In our actions workflow, we can now configure Encore to read the runtime config when building our Docker image. And that should be it. Let's commit and push our code. And this should trigger a new deployment on DigitalOcean and this time with our new endpoint and the database connection. And now it's time to test it out. And it works. If you don't feel like managing Docker images, runtime configurations, or production database migrations manually, then you can use Encore Cloud. Encore Cloud is a platform built to automatically deploy your Encore applications to major cloud providers like AWS and GCP. It fully automates your infrastructure and DevOps work. For production, you connect your own cloud account on AWS and GCP and Encore Cloud will set up everything for you in your own account. Your app will be running without any runtime dependencies on Encore Cloud itself. Encore Cloud also provides free built-in hosting if you don't have an AWS or GCP account. Perfect for development and hobby projects. So let's deploy our app and see how it works. Because I used Encore App Create when creating the app, Encore has added a special Git remote to my repo. I can now use Git push Encore to trigger a deploy. But you can also connect a GitHub repo if you don't want to push from your local machine. But let's open this link and look at the deploy in action. And here you can see the infrastructure that was created. If our app would be using PubSub or Chrome jobs, those would also be listed here. Encore Cloud handles database migrations automatically based on the migrations in your code base. And now that the app is deployed, we can test it in the service catalog. In the Encore Cloud dashboard, you also have access to monitoring, tracing, and automatic preview environments. So you can test each pull request in a dedicated temporary environment. That's it. Thank you for watching. I've added some links under the video that you can check out. Some code examples for how to get your Encore apps deployed to DigitalOcean, but also to Railway if you prefer that. Be sure to give the Encore project a star on GitHub to follow along with the updates. It will also help us out. And if you have any questions, just post them below or join the Encore community on Discord. See you.